There are currently 800,000 people with dementia in the UK and over 17,000 are young people. Two thirds of people with dementia are women. There will be over a million people with dementia by 2021. 60,000 deaths a year are directly attributable to dementia. Dementia affects 1 in 100 people between the ages of 65 and 69 and 1 in 25 people between the ages of 69 and 79. Over the age of 80, dementia affects 1 in 6 people. As a society, we can help by becoming more aware of dementia and the difficulties it presents. Dementia is not a natural part of aging. When someone voices fears about becoming forgetful or confused, people often reassure them that this is a normal part of aging. But are they right? Dementia is caused by diseases of the brain. Dementia is the name for a collection of symptoms that include memory loss, mood changes, and problem with communication and reasoning. These symptoms are brought about by a number of diseases that causes changes in the brain. It's not just about losing your memory. People often think of dementia as a form of memory loss. And usually it does start by affecting people's short-term memory. But it is more than that. It can also affect the way people think, speak, and do things. It's possible to live well with dementia. Most of us have some image in our mind of what life with dementia looks like. That image is often very bleak. So it can be surprising to learn that many people with dementia continue to drive, socialize and hold down satisfying jobs. Even as dementia progresses, many people lead active, healthy lives, continue their hobbies and enjoy loving relationships and friendships. There is more to a person than dementia. Sometimes, dementia can overshadow the other aspects of the person, the bits that really matter. Good morning, Bobby. Would you like to have your breakfast now? Yeah? Okay. Slowly, Bobby. Let me guess, get your eyeglasses, Bobby, all right? Let's put this on. No, I can do it. All right. Okay, and let's put your, let's put your sleepers on, all right? Is that better? It's nice, isn't it? Yeah? Okay. Are you ready to stand up? Yeah. Let me get your simmer frame, Bobby, all right? Stand up. Yeah? Let me help you, Bobby. Okay. I'll do it myself. Okay, I'll help you, Bobby. I All can right? do it. Okay. Let's do it. Ready? Steady? Okay. Okay, so sit you in the chair, Bobby. Turn around. Shall we brush your teeth, Bobby, ready for breakfast? Shall I get it for you, yeah? Okay. Here's your brush and water, Bobby. Okay? And here's your water. Okay. Slowly, Bobby, slowly. Come on, give me the water. Slow. You're not a calm very down, nice girl, are okay, you? Okay, calm down. Give me the water. You're not a I'll very make it nice girl, are you? Give me the water, yeah? 
I'll make a cup I'll of tea. Cup all right? Tea. I'll make a cup of tea. Make a cup of tea. Make a bloody cup of tea. Are they your daughters, Bobby? No. I think so, yeah. No, they're not. Yeah, look, no, no. that's Joe. No, they're not. And that's Sarah. No. And that's you. No, I beginning. haven't got any daughters. I yeah, haven't got any no, daughters. No. Yeah. I, I haven't got any daughters. Remember, she was here the other day. Joe was here. No. Look, that's Joe no. and that's Sarah. No. Yeah? No. They look no. like you. I don't have any daughters. You have two You're daughters. You're being stupid. Go okay. away. I've got no daughters, have I? That's your daughter, Bob. You ask my mum. You ask my mum. But they mom. are your daughter, Bob. No. It's mine. Oh, I don't want to take it away. Sorry. Do you like me it's to make another cup of tea for you? No, no. Look at the mess you've made now. Look I'll at be it. back in five minutes. You're not a very nice girl, are you? Go on. You're not. I don't like She's a nice girl. I don't like you. You're not. I'll be back later. Go on, away. Go on. Okay? I don't like you. You're nasty, nasty. Do it on your own. Okay. Slowly. Okay. Okay. Is that enough? 
that's enough Bobby. Yes, yeah? that, that's nice, yes. Okay. Yes. You look very nice now. Very pretty. Yeah, very pretty. Thank you. Oh, my kelly's. Stop fighting, Bobby. Stop fighting. Okay, I'll give, give you something it. different. Give it. Stop no. it. Take a seat, please. It's mine. Okay, take a seat, please. I'll get you another one. All right? It's mine. Okay, give it to me. Okay, you write, right, Tanya. Yeah? No. Let her bar for a little while, all right? And you can read this magazine. Yeah? Okay. Any interesting in the paper? Yes. Yeah. How's the weather for today? Oh, 
Bobby, calm down, Bobby. I'll give you another, another thing. Here's for you, Bobby. Bobby, you can play with that, yeah? Okay, here's another thing. Yes, Tanya. Okay, I will go for assistant, all right? Would you like to help Tanya? She needs yeah. some assistant. Okay? How can I help you? Uh, she needs some assistant. Okay. Can you take can I take you out? Yeah, yeah. you can take it out, yeah. Okay. 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 Stop it, Bobby. Stop it, Bobby. Please. You can go to the garden if you want. Paste. This is a paste. Paste. Come down. Paste. Come down, Bobby. Paste. Bobby Please had a fight with Simon. So I think she needs to go home.
think Joy is coming. You see, here she is. Yeah. Change the walls and the carpet. Can I see? Yeah. Soon you can. Shall we go now? Yeah, it's getting, getting a bit chilly. Yeah. Let's go in there. Come on then. Oh, 
I'll come with you. No, Mum. Oh. You're staying in the <laughs> Mum, you can't do that. Give that back. Okay, I'll take them and put them in your room. Kiss, kiss. Bye bye. That's all right. I'm going to put these in our room. Okay? <laughs> bye, Mum. It's mine. No. Yes, it's mine. 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 Come in. Hello. Hello, Hello Joe. Nice to see you. And you. Have a seat. Oh, thank you. Oh, I just want to speak to you. Mum seems to be getting more confused lately. Well, at the moment, Mum's got a UTI, which means she's got a wee infection, and that does increase confusion in the elderly. She's been treated with antibiotics at the moment, so that will get a bit better, but it won't go completely. She'll still be confused as she was before. Is she in any pain at all? No, she's not in any pain. We have tools that we can use to monitor pain in residents that can't tell us if they've got any pain, so at the moment, she's not in any pain. She's quite cheerful, content. She's okay. She should be. She'll That's be good. She was a bit. I was a bit worried today when I saw her. And she didn't recognise me at all. No, no. She, that will get better. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Once the you once the wee infection is cleared up, and she will continue to gradually deteriorate anyway. Okay. And then we'll come a stage where she won't recognise you. Um, she won't know where she is. She won't necessarily know what time, what day it is what she's eating, what she's chosen to eat, whether she's eaten or not, she may forget. Yeah. Okay. okay then, thank you for that, thanks for all your help. You're welcome, any time, any time you've got any concerns just call, you know what it's like. Okay, it's thank nice. you. You take care now, thank, thank you. you, keep you informed. Right, I'll see you later. Yeah, it's nice to see you, yeah, you take yeah. care. Bye bye. the day comes that I have to start asking for help and my independence starts to slip away. I hope it only lasts for a short time and then I die in a dignified way. And I would hope that I could still be consulted and still have some say in my independence. People with dementia like myself cannot always communicate like others. Some days we are unable to give a straight answer of yes or no. I really would appreciate being given time to finish what I'm trying to say. Some people say I have dementia. Yeah. I think people should put dementia to one side and focus on what I like to say. My name is Bobby, not dementia. Um, just tell us about your wife uh, before the symptoms started. Uh, before the symptoms she was quite a brainy lady. She used to work as a dispenser oh, in a chemist. Um, I don't know, about 22 years she worked. Oh, 22 years, long years, yeah. And uh, then she bumped into me and got... And okay. she actually packed up during the pharmacy. So. Okay. But I think she... Well, when things started to go wrong, I think she knew what sort of drugs she was after. Right. Uh, probably wrong to say that. I know, yeah, sometimes. Uh, well, I mean, she, she used to get around quite a bit. Okay. I mean, travelling and all that sort of thing. She travelled to England, I think, nothing I in her car. Oh, right. Yeah, she was all. Okay. And she used to um, well, give money away to charities a lot. That's true, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah so, uh, I didn't mind that. Okay. Well, she had her own bank account. She never used mine. Oh, okay. I used to live off her money, actually. Oh, right. As a dispenser, when she was a chemist, she used to earn good money. Okay, anyway. And I used to live off her money bank mine. Okay. <laughs> uh, please describe when and how she started changing. Little things used to disappear in the home. Money disappeared. All sorts of jewellery disappeared. I don't know. I was told she was giving it to charity, which she did. A lot of her money went to charities. Right. RSPCA, life, but all them sort of things. You wouldn't believe when the money went. Right. Uh, and then she helped her, even uh, 
put money into the surgery in Midhurst. Okay. But I, I yeah, the doctor is. said she, I could have it back. I said, nah, forget it. Mm -hmm. Go on, go on. How did you realise that your wife had a problem that needed um, investigation? Um, Neighbours, even the police notified she was doing funny things in the town, okay. standing in front of a shop for an hour looking in the window. Oh. Things like that. And, right. and she was buying, well not buying, she was picking up stuff in shops and trying to walk out without paying. Oh, okay. And of course, right. the police were called and in the long run I explained to the police what was happening. Okay. And every so often, a shop used to ring her and say, so and so and so and so off the shop, would you like to come down and pay for it or bring oh. it back? Oh, dear. <laughs> it's really hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Describe how you got a diagnosis and started treatment. Um, it started, I took her to the doctor several times. Right. And then there's a place called Grayland, well, at okay. Chichester, have you yeah. heard of it? Yeah, yes, I had. Oh, I took her to see a well, doctor down there. Uh -huh. And they'd done certain tests and there were questions to answer and all those sort of things. And then I took her to a doctor down Southampton. Right. And um, King Edward's Hospital, do you remember when that was going in mid Yes, I, yeah, yeah. I took her to see a specialist and I paid a lot of money to have her checked out. Okay. And everything come back the same, she's getting dementia or whatever that is. Right. And they put her on certain pills that they didn't help. Okay. Yeah. So that was the beginning? That was the beginning, beginning of it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about... Um, the other close relatives, what was their response? Uh, uh, no one wanted to know. Right. I mean, there's a few relations around, but they're not interested. Okay. Now, I, I, even my friends, I said, do you want to come up there? I'll take you up there, or you can go with your husband, or, or go yourself, and they don't want to know. They think it's a disease that's it's, catching, I don't yeah, know why. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Yeah. Weird. It is, yeah. Yeah, everyone's scared. Seeing a spouse lose her memories is sometimes linked to losing a part of yourself. Yeah, yeah. And you have dreams of a happy, a retired life together. We were very happy. I mean, we had a little ups and downs like everyone. Right. But I mean, uh, what's I know, you know, my uh, This year, I think it'd be 48 years we've been together. Yeah, or oh, 48 uh, years, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What has been the emotional impact? On you? Um, I think of every day. <coughs> you handle your wife's caregiving along with other family responsibilities. So, um, how did you balance um, uh, and prioritize uh, this? Well, I just uh, put her in a well, can I say, I'll put her in a room and the telly's on and leave oh. in front of the telly and I'll get on with what I got to do. That's but if I had to go out shopping or oh. anything like that, I always took her with me. Do you have any oral comments or message to the caregivers? Um, um, cottage hospital in Midas with other people who were looking after their own, you know, relations yeah. or partners. Right. But I found a lot of people weren't interested. Right. They sort of uh, not put it's enough effort. It's staring and... Um, they never okay. need to put enough effort into looking after Look their up. partners or older people or parents. And I thought, God, I'm, I, 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 I say I'm doing this and doing that. But they never. That's right. Yeah, it's a hard old life. It is. It is really hard. I mean, especially, this is what we need to change, you know, oh, the yeah. society's attitude. Mm -hmm. um, they need to look after their family members, oh, yeah. you know, and, be, uh, yes. yeah, so we can reduce the um, um, uh, home care set up. And, well, uh, I'm going to say, a lot of people ain't got the patience to look after. Oh, so. that's true, that we, we oh, yeah, yeah, really. You find like patients here, they keep repeating them, and, and some people get I I enough yeah. of this and they walk yeah, out. Yeah, that's true. And they slam the door on, on them and leave them locked in a room, and yeah. then they wonder why they're on them and shouting. That's true. Yeah. yeah, it is really a fact, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, when, uh, when you can all handle the situations, you will easily yeah. get up and, you know, just... Mm. Yeah. What is your wish list about changes around you 
in people, in society, in employment, in environments to better support persons thrust into a caregiving role for a person with a dementia. To put more money into looking after these people. I feel so bloody useless because I can't do anything. I know, it's really hard. This is the hardest part of, you know, life. Thank you so much for your time today and I hope this message would help other people, those who are struggling to I hope so. yeah, look after their dear ones. Um, I'm Terry and my husband Peter was diagnosed with um, Alzheimer's um, seven years ago and um, it's a great shock that diagnosis because you really have no idea what the future is going to hold. Um, the personality changes dramatically and this is the very hardest part I think for most relatives is that there you have your loved one, your husband, wife, mother, father, they look physically the same but their personality has changed entirely and they can go from being a very kind gentleman which my husband was to somebody with an awful lot of aggression and um, anger I realise now that that aggression and anger was basically from fear and um, the fact that he didn't know what was going on and frustration because the things that he'd always done quite easily he couldn't then do. Um, one of the first things that I noticed was his ability to do simple um, DIY jobs at home which he'd never had a problem with became insurmountable to him and he would get angry, he would blame other people, he would blame the equipment and it was just <laughs> unbelievable. I, I would watch him and think, what, what's happening? What's happening here? He can't, you know, why can't he do that? Can't change a light bulb properly without it being a great drama. And anything more complicated just became, well, we couldn't do it really. So there was a lot of instances of, of unexplained anger. Um, there was forgetfulness, um, confusion really. Um, he became unable to take a message on the phone. If somebody phoned for me, I would come home and he'd say, somebody phoned and he couldn't remember who it was. Um, and didn't seem able to write down the telephone number and I got very concerned and he had a couple of strange physical things sort of dizzy turns as well so I used that as an excuse to go to the GP um, the GP dismissed the physical things which I had a feeling were small strokes TIAs but he dismissed that but asked my husband a few questions and dictated in front of me a referral letter for my husband to go to the hospital to have a full physical check. But in this referral letter, he asked them to see my husband, saying that in his opinion, he was in the first stages of dementia. And that was how we were told and it was like being punched in the stomach. In a way, my, well, my husband didn't react. I don't think he really, really took it in. So we went and had virtually a whole day in a unit in um, St Mary's Hospital in Portsmouth, where he was checked thoroughly for everything that could, um, it, every physical thing. And they found that he was in perfect health, very good health for a man of his age and we then saw I presume um, a psychiatrist or a psychogeriatrician and he asked Peter quite a lot of questions. It's a, a test that is done um, to assess mental capacity I think or awareness and uh, from that test we were told that he did have um, Alzheimer's type dementia. 
We were then referred to the mental health team, the, the elderly person's mental health team in Havant, who came out to see Peter at home and once again went through a lot of these questions. It's a standard test which has a score and if you score under 20 from 30 you are um, assumed to have some sort of um, dementia and Peter I think his first score was 18 and we were told that he had mild to moderate Alzheimer's type dementia. Um, so Peter was put on Aricept which I was told um, was not a cure obviously but hopefully would slow down the process um, which it did appear to do he tolerated the medication extremely well and I was very lucky because I know not everybody does and so um, from then um, it was this almost well it was fear really as to what was going to happen next the um, mental health team were extremely good and gave me a lot of practical advice I also got, they have a lot of wonderful leaflets which are issued from the Alzheimer's Society which cover just about everything that you, you could want. And we were also um, approached as to if we wanted to join an Alzheimer's um, carers group. And at first I was a little bit reluctant because I wondered whether it would just be everybody sort of bemoaning and swapping stories but we went and it was absolutely wonderful it, it was um, it was the carers and the cared for and the carers would normally have, would have a professional come in to um, perhaps to tell you about power of attorney or any benefits that you were um, entitled to or um, suggestions for practical health and People like Pete would go and have some music therapy or do some art and it was very social and I made a lot of friends from it but equally so I learned a tremendous amount and it's like it's a support group really because you learn a lot from other people who are going through um, the, the same thing so gradually um, I found out as much as I could um, about dementia. I found out the help that was available. I would say to anybody, um, accept any help that you're offered. It's not always what you want, but you don't know until you give it a try. And um, the uh, mental health group were amazing. They had a very good occupational therapist who came to the house to see if there were any adaptions that could be done to um, as Peter's program progressed and his balance and everything weren't so good. They um, helped us in the bathroom. I asked for some rails, but actually was given an amazing bath, which um, with was battery powered and could be um, charged up, and the bath came up and down. And um, as Peter got worse, and I couldn't, he couldn't shower himself. I had to bath him, and luckily, with the help of this bath aid and the fact that, luckily, I'm physically quite fit, I was able to do this. Although I know a lot of people wouldn't be able to do it, and s slipping into the role of a carer is not always easy um, and isn't always something that people can do. Luckily I've done care work, I've done some nursing and I didn't find it a, a difficulty at all but I know it's not something everybody can do but there is help if you can't. Um, Peter was aware he had dementia, he would tell people, I think he preempted the fact that he was perhaps would forget what he was saying or lose track and he preempted that by telling people that he had Alzheimer's but I'm not sure that he really un ever understood 
um, what it meant. He knew, in, in his own words, I'm not the man I was. And he would say that quite repeatedly. And so he knew that it, it was having an impact on him. But I think it, it's something that he, he didn't really understand. And obviously as his condition worsened, he, he really didn't understand it. And sadly, um, the, the odd newspaper report would be, well, the headlines would be cure found for dementia, which he took to be literal, and would say, oh, there you go, you know, that there you are, um, well, there's going to be a cure, and I, I would say, well, you know, there will be in the future. And then some days he would tell me he was okay. He would say, I've beaten this dementia, I told you, I'll be all right, I, 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 I've beaten it. And he, he, he convinced himself at times the um, hardest thing for him was the start of incontinence because he was a very private, very clinging man and that devastated him. Um, I'm very pleased to, to, to see that there are, is a lot more awareness of Alzheimer's. It's very much in, in the fore, in the media and the government who have got to really get on top of it, well not on top of it, but be more aware of it because I think by 2020 there, there are going to be so many people with dementia and it isn't only the actual person that has the dementia, it, it's the families, it's a, there's a huge amount of people are being affected and it's good that it's not now um, brushed under the carpet, there is a lot more awareness and people are happy to talk about it, where, as with a lot of mental illness, there was a certain stigma, but hopefully now, because so many people are being touched by it, that um, that is coming to an end. Thank you. Hi, my name is the Reverend Stephen Brunn, and I want to talk to you a little bit today about being aware of the illness of dementia. I suppose I served in a parish which uh, had a great number of elderly patients, and uh, many of them uh, suffered from dementia. However, I didn't really understand or was fully aware of the disease until my own father uh, uh, contracted the disease back in, uh, when he was 66. For a number of years, it was very difficult to understand the illness, giving over to frustrations for parents, my mother, particularly in my family, thinking that he was just getting things wrong to the realisation after a number of years that he was suffering from a debilitating illness. As the years went by and things got worse, uh, Dad had to go into residential care, which uh, was excellent for him, a needed thing at that time, and there was no way that Mum could look after him anymore. And I think being aware of the early stages is so important. When we get to the latter stages in dementia and Alzheimer's, there's nothing you can do except care for them and know that that person is still there but is in a different place. So for me, my experience with other parishioners now has been increased by the care that I've had to give and my mum's given and where his residential home has given to his disease of Alzheimer's. So I hope that this video and everyone else who's going to partake on it will raise your awareness of the ever-increasing disease of Alzheimer's. Most people also think that it happens when you're very old, but like my father, it started when he was in his early 60s. It's not a disease that's contained just in your 80s or 90s. So please be aware of this di dis disabling disease, which not only affects the person, but affects the whole family. Thank you.